I think what you're describing with the imperialist and colonialist model of, of agriculture is that it just lends itself to oppression. It just lends itself to, um, you know, decomplexifying ecosystems. Um, it, it's like it, the, there's a long history and a long correlation there between the agricultural model employed by the Romans and the colonialists and the kind of societies that are built around that. Um, and when we talk about mixed cultivation and indigenous stewardship of the land, I mean, it seems to lend itself to a far different conception of how to build societies, how to have relationships with one another, with more than human life and the land itself. Uh, so maybe describe some of the characteristics of mixed cultivation and, uh, you know, maybe dig a little bit into the history of where, uh, that started. Yeah. So. You know, when, when we're looking at this Roman model of extraction and how that has essentially become conventional agriculture in modern day Europe, I, as you're saying, it's absolutely necessary to, um, you know, to contrast that with what existed before and what still exists in, in certain ways today, right? Because we forget that some of the, a lot of these uh, ancient relationships with the land that people had thousands of years ago never went away, that they still exist in the margins of European society. Um, as folk traditions, as, you know, peasant farming systems, um, and that they, they're forgotten about or actively, um, oppressed or, or, or suppressed, but they still, they're still there. And so when, when we're looking for authentic, uh, relationships with the land that, um, that our ancestors engaged in, you know, for those of us who are of European descent, um, this is like where we, where we need to look. And so when we look back, to let's say uh, six, seven thousand years ago, you're seeing the shift from Mesolithic, you know, Middle Stone Age hunter-gatherer societies to grain agriculture, and that's a whole conversation in and of itself of why that happened. But essentially, um, over time, you get this hybridization of these two different ways of growing food, right? Of these grain cultures from the Near East and these uh, these tens of thousands year old. Um, uh, hunter-gatherer land management systems from Europe. And in those hybrid spaces, there emerged like this incredible diversity of land care practices. And so you'll see a place like the Euganian Hills in northeastern Italy, where for 5,000 years, from I think 9,000 BC to like 4,000, um, oh no, sorry, uh, after that. Uh, but yeah, for essentially for 5,000 years, you see this single agricultural system that united both like the grain growing systems and the forest gardening systems that had preceded them. And so what people there did was like they used fire very strategically to, um, they had controlled burns where they turned their like linden fir forest into this diverse agro ecosystem. And every year, every few years, they would have these small scale burns. Um, where they would just clear out weeds and um, small trees, and they would plant grains, hemp, um, poppies, herbs, you know, into these fields and plant chestnut trees, walnuts, uh, olives, willows, and grapes. And so this is a system that gave them pretty much everything they needed to not just survive but thrive, you know, because you know with this diversity of, of food sources, they're getting like every nutrient you can imagine, you know, they're all this caloric intake and they're just managing it without plows, without pesticides, without, um, you know, without enslaved labor. They're, they're doing this all by hand with a torch and mm -hmm. some seed. And that's like, and that happened for 5,000 years, which, you know, is a huge amount of time. That's the amount of time between today and when the great pyramid at Giza was built. Right. So this is a system that fundamentally, is built to last. And the people who did this didn't go off and conquer Europe. They didn't cause climate change. They didn't do any of these other things that, you know, that you see later people doing. And so this is a system that also has like, um, you know, strong similarities with the, the Milpa system in Central America and its North American variants, where, you know, you have indigenous peoples in the eastern half of um, North America, like managing their landscape in a very similar way with fire, grain, and tree crops. Um, and so you see that happening in different places at different times. Um, and later on, that 
that same system gets transformed again into what you're mentioning of uh, of cultura promiscua, which is Italian for essentially mixed cultivation. Um, and that happened um, essentially in, in mostly in Tuscany, but you also see it happening in Sicily and Southern Italy and a few other places. And so what cultura promiscua is, is essentially just uh, multiple levels of an ecosystem uh, of a, of a, like an agrarian ecosystem in the same place. So you have rows of fruit trees or nut trees, like mulberries, um, maybe maples, willow, cherry, olive. You see rows of those that are um, cut back every year to keep them small. And between them, you have uh, grapevines for making wine um, trained between the trees in these like very specific ways. And so you have those alleys of, of trees and grapes, and between them you have grain, hay fields, vegetables, uh, pasture, you name it. So this is a system where in a single acre you have all these different kinds of um, of crops and of growing systems. It's like a fully integrated forest garden. And it exists even within the paradigm of private property, which is really notable here because uh, one of the reasons that you know, that um, like the Milpa system in, in North America, like was able to succeed so well is because there, it was not based on this paradigm of private property, right? It, when you right. have like communal access to land, it becomes much easier to do these kinds of, uh, of growing systems that are much more beneficial to the local environment. Uh, and what's notable about culture of is that you can have just like a few acres of this. And it can stay the same for centuries, right? You just need to have someone who knows how to manage it. Um, and this is a system that predated the Romans, even like this was created by the Etruscans, who um, who were in you know essentially modern day Tuscany. Um, and there's still farms today in that area where the same system is going on, and it is almost the exact same today as it would have been three thousand years ago. And wow. so I think when we're looking at um, ways to to really have a resilient culture and a resilient relationship with the land, you know, this like systems like this are really, really important because over three thousand years, you know, I mean, just think about the history of, of Italy. Like you've had countless invasions, plagues, droughts, flooding, you know, just drastic changes. It, the advent of capitalism, you know, you've had so many things happening, and this system has remained almost unchanged in that time. And so when we're looking at like what we need to do, you know, I think this is a good place to start. 